thousand miles away from his wife's parents' house. And they, her brothers call him and they tell him, we want you to bring our sister over because her father died. No? So if he tells her her father died and that's why they're going there, she's going to be crying the whole way. Okay? So she tells him, yeah, we don't go there. We usually go once in every month or two, and now it's not time. So he lies to her, he tells her, you know what, I'm getting married to a second wife, and uh, I want to take you to, to, your, to your parents' house so I can spend a week with her, then I bring her back. <laughs> he did not know what he did. Yeah, and he threw the 2,000 miles, she's nagging and crying and all that. Huh? Because he thought that this will be easier in her than knowing her father died. Her father. So when they get to her parents' house, before she gets up, he tells her, listen, Ya Bint Al-Halal, I, I lied to you. I'm not getting married. You are the greatest woman, but your father died. So she said, my father died. That we can deal with. <laughs> but getting married again, that's something I... <laughs> Allah <laughs> yirhamu. <laughs> All right. So he told Imam Nawawi, "Hada hadith sahih fi ibahat al kadib lil maslaha." So some of the ulama said they're not only limited to these three, but saying usually this hadith is clear that you can lie when there is benefit, and we're not talking about personal benefit. Yani complete. It's solely personal. And you go, you lie. Okay, when I sell something and I lie about it, I say it's, uh, it's made in Italy and it's Chinese, I'm going to sell it for three times the price. Okay, I'm benefiting, so here we go. Imam now we said that. It's okay to lie for the benefit. No. Examples that we had given. The hadith, what has the hadith said, and whatever is related. But as I said, lying to someone like that, you're harming him. So where's the benefit? All right, so it's very important we understand that. <coughs> and we know the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam when he lied, uh, when he said, I'm sick. So he doesn't go out with his people to worship the idols or the sun. And also when he, when he, when he said about the, 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 the one who destroyed the, all the, the idols, he said the big one destroyed them. And when he lied to Namrud and his soldiers, when he said, when they asked him about Sarah, he said, she's my sister. All right? All that was permissible because it's protecting his life. Because if he would have told them she, she's, he's her husband, they would have killed him. Okay? So it's very important that we, end, we estimate and we understand what we're, what we're saying. And in one hadith, uh, some of them said hadith, some of them said, Sahabi Imran ibn Hussain said it. Sometimes you say something, the person who hears it will understand one thing. But you mean something else. Sometimes that is permissible, but not to do it بطلاقة, يعني not to do it all the time. You do it in certain situation when it's needed. You say something, from the superficial uh, statement, it's understood one way. Most people will understand it the way it's being expressed. But your understanding or your intention is another meaning of the statement. Huh? That's the best definition I can give you. For example, when a man came to Shu'ba or uh, to Shu'bi, and he, Shu'bi did not want to meet him. So he told his, his servant, the person who works for him, tell him that the, sh now the man knocks on the door. So when he finds out who it was, he tells his servant, tells him that the shu'bi is not here. And he points to, the, to a hole in the ground. <laughs> and he, he, he's not in the mood to meet him. And at the same time, he doesn't want to hurt him, telling him, I can't see you now. And even though, as we will talk about, you should go back. If you are being told to return, you should return and you should not have hard feelings. Because sometimes people visit you at times that you don't want to see them. Yeah, and you're busy, you're having a fight with your wife because you did not know how to, huh, to lie. But the whole thing is, <laughs> but the whole thing is, uh, it's very important. Yeah, and you don't want to lie. So you can do ta'ari. So he tells, yeah, and one Imam Ahmed, he said to a man, tell him I'm not here. And a man comes to visit Imam Ahmed, he's sitting with Imam Ahmed, then another person comes looking for this man. 
So the, so the man screams, is so and so here? And Imam Ahmad tells him, he's not here. Okay? So it's very important you use it in the right time, when you need it. You, and Ibrahim السلام, used it to prove to them that you worship these idols and now I'm going to tell you the big one destroyed them. You're going to say, these people don't, these idols don't even move. <laughs> so he proved to them by their own statement. He says that she's my sister about his wife and she is his sister in Islam. So for them, they hear his sister, they think it's her, his sister, yani they have the same father and mother. But his intention, she's my sister in Islam. So he can save his life. So he did it for a reason, not like joking, oh, let's fool them. Ha ha ha. No. For a reason, to save his life. Okay? And even lying becomes permissible to save your life. Even to say you're kafir. Yani they tell you, either you say kafir or we kill you. Say I'm kafir. Huh? But in your heart, you're a believer. But you're just saying it so they leave you alone. It's a lie. Like Ammar bin Yasir, radiallahu anhu, did the Sahabi. And the Prophet وسلم, told him, and when he asked him, so they, to let him go, they said, disbelieve in Muhammad. So they tortured him to the point where he could not handle it. He said, I disbelieve in And I, I, I commit kufr. So they let him go. He went back to the Prophet ﷺ. When he asked him, the Prophet ﷺ said, no problem, and if they come back to hurt you again, say it again. With his heart, mutma'innum bil iman. Illa man ukriha wa qalbuhu mutma'innun bil iman. Okay? So he's being coerced to lie, which is, okay, and someone comes to you, and he tells you, and he's holding the gun on, on your, to your head. And he tells you, are you uh, so-and-so? You want to tell me, if he knows that you are so-and-so, huh, he's going to kill you. You want to tell me it's haram to lie? No. To save yourself, lie. But don't tell him I'm Fadi Kablawi. <laughs> <laughs> All right? <clears throat> okay. One story I finish with this, Abu Talha. And Umm Sulaim, Umm Sulaim, one of the Sahabiyya. One of her kids and her husband is Abu Talha. One of their kids was sick. So Abu Talha was out of town. So when he comes back, his, the, the kid dies. So when he comes back, he asks her, how is the kid? She said, comfortable. The best comfort he can have, because he died. But she did not want to tell him he died. Yani, in the morning she will. What can he do at night? All right? And she beautified herself for him, and they had the greatest time, and she had food made for him, and they even slept together. Look how much she's concerned about her husband. He said, the kid is dead is dead. So in the morning, she told him. And what she meant when she said he's comfortable, he is. He's with Allah now. But he was suffering from the sickness. So now he died, he's comfortable. And the kid, so we're not worried that he's going to be punished. Okay? So when she told him in the morning, he got upset. And he went to the Prophet وسلم, and he complained her to him. So he وسلم, smiled. Yani approval of her action. And he said, Barakallahu lakuma fi laylatikuma. May Allah bless your night. Even some of the, the narration said, that they had a kid from that intercourse that night and who memorized the Quran and even some, some stories said that they had nine kids, they all memorized the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here she said he's comfortable, her husband thought that he's better, but she was meaning that he's comfortable because he's dead, he's dead now. All right, so that is something that we, Imam Zuhri rahimahullah, one of the ulama of the hadith, uh, was sitting with the Hisham ibn Abdul Malik, the Khalifa. Hisham ibn Abdul Malik was or used to hate Ali ibn Abi Talib. So the ayah, Man al-Ladi Tawalla Kibarahu, talks about Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. Hisham ibn Abdul Malik hated Ali, so he used to say the ayah talks about Ali. But it's talking about the head of the hypocrites. So when he asked one of the ulama, who, who's meant when Allah says, who did Allah mean when he says about this ayah? He said, Ali, uh, we know that it's Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. So the Khalifa tells him, you're lying. It's Ali ibn Abi Talib. 
So the alim knows where the truth, but he, yani that's the he said the Khalifa knows better. He did not approve, but he said the Khalifa knows.